in our modern American culture of consumerism, it's so easy to get caught up in things that don't really matter. Case in point, when you got your first full-time job, there were probably a lot of must-haves that were bought. Cars, TVs, clothes, shoes, and so on. These were items that you had to have to show you made it. Okay, out of all those things, where are they now? Do you still own them? For all of you that within one year of your first full-time job, you don't count. Do you still own that 27 TV that's 12 inches deep? When you run, do you still use a Discman with Annie Skip? Who has a first-gen iPhone? When we saw those things, we had to have them right now. They were the greatest, but these things are all temporary. There will always be something better than what we have next year, and what we own will not cost the same as when we bought it. When you become a Christian, you are called to invest in something greater than right now. You are called to invest in your eternal home in heaven. Matthew 6, 19 through 20. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moths and vermin destroy, and where the thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in, he in heaven, where moth and vermin do not destroy, and where the thieves do not break in and steal. This verse is not telling you to save your money because Proverbs 13, 22 tells us, A good person leaves an inheritance for their children's children, but a sinner's wealth is stored up for the righteous. Our value and worth can't be in our money. This was the problem with the rich young ruler. The young ruler asked Jesus what he needed to do to inherit eternal life. When Jesus told him, the young ruler replied, I have done those things since I was a boy. And this is what happened next. In Mark 10, 21 through 22, Jesus looked, him, looked at him and loved him. One thing you lack, he said, go sell everything you have and give it to the poor, and you will have treasures in heaven. Then come follow me. At this, the young man's face fell. He went, he went away sad because he had great wealth. As you read about Jesus, you will see that he is always challenging someone's heart when they ask him to follow him. Jesus does not care if you are rich or poor. Money meant nothing to him. But the young ruler did care, and his money meant more than Jesus. We have to trust and have faith in God that he will provide for us more than if we rely on ourselves. Hebrews 11:6, And without faith, it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. To live eternally, we have to seek God like we would our fantasy sports team. What I mean is, we have to spend time in the Bible like we would looking up stats for a player we would draft to our team. We need to transfer the dedication it takes to beat a modern video game to spending time in prayer. We get so good at crushing things that don't matter after we are gone that we lose sight on things that will matter in heaven. I'm a huge CrossFit junkie. I love how when properly put together, the exercises painfully complement each other. I love suffering with other people as we work out. I love how I'm able to pick up heavier and heavier things. This may sound a little narcissistic, but I really like how I look in the mirror when I manage to make my diet match my workouts. And I see good results. But Paul reminds me of this in 1 Timothy 4.8, for physical training is of some value, but godliness has value for all things, holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. What am I really working for if all I do is spend time in the gym and not in the Word? I need to be as diligent in preparing my spiritual body as my physical body. 1 Corinthians 9.24-25 Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the game goes to strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. How we live our lives is a big deal. We can't take what Jesus did for us for granted. In America, I feel that the devil has it easy. There are so many things he can use to take our eyes off the final prize. Remember, it does not matter how big our house is because our house in God's kingdom will be more than enough. Our worth is not in how much we make. Because in God's kingdom, the streets will be made of gold. Our job does not define us. It's what we do, not who we are. What defines us is our Lord Jesus Christ, and we want to be the
the best representatives we can and bring honor and glory to his name. These last 23 teachings have been about living eternally. Week after week, we have seen how God will have us change our way of thinking to begin living for him. We've talked about discipling other men, learned a Bible overview, talked about loving our families and what a biblical man acts like. If anything from these teachings stick out to you, that's where you start. That's where God is calling you to live eternally. Allowing God to speak into your life and change your heart is the first step in living eternally. Faith in something you can't see, showing, God, showing those around you that God can in fact change your heart. That you are investing in something greater than right now. And ultimately, living eternally means that you fully accept your responsibility to the Great Commission. So, as you live, you teach. And as you teach, you live. And when you do this alongside other men, you begin to form a culture of disciples who are all on mission to live eternally and to carry the good news with them everywhere they go. Proverbs 27, 17. As iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. Before I sign off, I would like to talk to those of you being discipled and to those, to those of you watching this by yourselves. You will never feel qualified or have all the answers or be smart enough to, on your own to disciple someone. If I relied on just myself, none of the teachings I've done, let alone this whole project, would not have gotten done, not without God's hand. So you will have to pray and trust in God to guide you along the way. Just make time to read the Bible. It might just be a verse or a chapter, but stay in the Word. You will need to find another man who you can disciple, and remembering the things from the beginning of the teachings, you will need to be all in, fully accountable, and prepared to be uncomfortable. And you will also need to find another man who can disciple you. Philippians 4.13 tells us, For I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. Now go and make disciples.